Hello and welcome to the video. For those of you that have been watching the channel, you will recognize this frame. This is the Armatan Marmot. This is the latest frame from Armatan and it has some unique advantages over the previous couple of frames that I've looked at on the channel. It has a bigger deck, it has a completely redesigned front end. And in this video, I'm going to go through very quickly how I've built this out to turn it into a fully working quadcopter. If you've never built a quadcopter before, this video is definitely not for you. I'm going to go from the beginning right to the very end, complete the build in one quick video, and I'm going to cover everything very, very quickly. If you've never built a quadcopter before or not sure of what I'm doing, I'd recommend going have a look at one of the quadcopter building for beginners series on the channel. I go through each of the individual steps and take five or six videos to go through everything so that you can get to the other end and you'll have a successful build. Now, if you haven't watched the review of the frame and why it is such a cute frame, I'll put a link here so you can go and have a look at that one as well. I'll pop a link in the description too. And all of the pieces that I'm going to be using is covered in that first video. So all that out of the way, let's get cracking and build this out. So I'm going to be using my standard process that I pretty much use irrespective of the kind of multi-rotor that I'm building. And that's to make sure that I don't get into a bit of a mess. So I'm broadly going to follow these steps with only one small change. I'm going to actually install the receiver before I do the ESC and power connections. And that's for two reasons. First of all, I'm using a Crossfire Nano on this thing. And one of the pads that I need is underneath the flight controller. So I'm going to need to solder that wire up before I mount the flight controller to do all the rest of the wiring for the power system. And secondly, I just wanted to check exactly how it's all going to go together. So if you haven't used Crossfire with something like a CL Racing F4S, uh, this is a version 1.5 flight controller, then I'll show you how to wire that up and set that up too. So I would always recommend, before you go any farther, plug the flight controller in before you do any soldering at all, plug it into beta flight, make sure that it all works. That way, if it's misbehaving at this point, you can immediately send it back and get another one. Sending it back when it's covered in loads of nasty soldering is gonna make it a lot trickier for you to do a return, and there's no point in building off a flight controller that has an issue. So I plug it in, make sure it works okay, have a look at how the ports are all set up, make sure that the default installation looks okay, and potentially even even if you know the kind of flight modes and the layout of the radio that you use regularly, it's worthwhile just saving all that in here and making sure when it reboots, all that stuff is saved and good. Next job then is to do the layout of the pieces. And this is the part of the build that I would recommend you spend the most time on. Figuring out where everything needs to go and where the space is means that when you start doing the cabling, you don't actually put cables in a place where you need to put another component. You can figure out how long all the cable runs are going to be. You can do all of the builds kind of in your head the first time around. That means when you start putting things together, you will avoid a lot of the common mistakes. Now the CL Racing F4S instruction manual is pretty good and it kind of shows you where all of the pads are and how you connect everything up. However, we are doing something a little bit different. We are using the Crossfire Nano and I'm also going to be using a TBS Unify Pro here as well. So I always find it useful to create a wiring diagram even if I'm not making a video like this just so I can refer to it as I'm sat here at the desk with a soldering iron in one hand and my thin solder in the other. So this is how we're going to connect it up. The camera is going to be connected as per the manual. Uh, the TBS Unify Pro is going to be connected up as per the manual. All of the colors of the wires are the right ones. It just helps me try and avoid making a boo-boo and putting things on the wrong pads. The only other thing I need to worry about then is the TBS Crossfire Nano. Because I'm going to run in the TBS Crossfire Nano with CRSF protocol rather than SBUS, so it means it actually has to have two different connections. Knowing how this is all going together, it also tells me exactly how my port should be configured. So UART1 will need to be a serial receiver, CRSF, and UART4 will have to be smart audio to control the VTX. So the next thing I did before I installed the flight controller into the middle of the frame, because I know that the only pad that I'm going to need is at the bottom, I'm happy with the default 9 volt supply for the camera and the VTX. So I just need to solder the wires onto this, make sure I'm crystal clear which way it's going to go round. I'm going to update the firmware on the nano receiver, make sure that's all bound, set up the radio, and as I would for any normal quadcopter and then I'm going to solder all the connections onto the flight controller, jump into beta flight, 
and just make sure that I can see all that working. And the great news is I absolutely can. The other cute thing about the CL Racing F4S flight controllers is it does power the receiver when you plug in the USB. Hooray! It really bugs me when flight controllers don't do that and you have to apply separate power to everything. This makes this part of the setup really straightforward. Next job then is the power system. So we can mount the flight controller in the middle of the frame and it's a case of figuring out what one arm would look like and then duplicating that arm for all the other motors. Now I'm going to leave a lot of the cables on the ESC quite long because that will all need to be done. So first of all I'd lay it out on the arm, clip all of the cables to length for the motors and almost make it like a little bit of a mini production line. So once those motors are all clipped to the same length I'm going to pop a little bit of the heat shrink that came in the kit with the marmot and I'm going to cover up those exposed connections once I've got them all soldered up. That gives me four identical motor and ESC combos for each of the arms. Now the motors here are not counterclockwise and clockwise so I can put them on any arm. If they have different threads you just have to be careful as you pop them on. So now I can start putting them onto the frame. Now the only other thing that I need to solder on the underneath of the flight controller is the power leads. Um, I'm going to have the power leads coming out the front. There's loads of room if you use the standoff supplied as part of the kit for me to run that up to the front. So I'll solder that on, then put the flight controller in place. And that's also got the one connection on the bottom for the soldered connection for the Crossfire receiver. And now all the other pads are on the top and I can just work my way around clipping things off putting them into place, trying to be as neat as possibly can and leave as much room both in front and behind the flight controller to mount the receiver itself and also to make room for the VTX. The nice thing is, is there's 20 and 30.5 millimeter spacings behind the main flight controller stack. So if you wanted to mount an auxiliary stack, you have got some room here. I'm just going to use double sided foam tape that tends to work really nice for me and that's the way I prefer to do it. So now that's all together, the next job is to just double check that I haven't done anything done with the power system, pop a ohm meter into the resistance setting onto the pins of the main power connection and hopefully it should kind of come up like this as the capacitors and things charge on the board then you'll see initially a very low resistance and it should then rise reasonably quickly. That looks good to me so we're ready to plug it in and do the configuration. So now it's plugged back into beta flight and I would do this before you put the VTX stuff on uh, just to make sure that everything's happy. Go through your configuration. Again, I have a bind and fly beta flight setup video that goes through every one of the single steps. I'd make sure that the d shot protocol is right, that your modes are properly set, that your on-screen display is configured in the way that you want to. Just go through every single part, make sure the receiver's working okay, make sure that fail safe is fine. And then once you've done that, I'd run the motors up, make sure they're moving in the right direction. And if any of them aren't, use BL Heli Suite to reverse them. At this point, I would then usually button up the frame, pop the props on, take it into the garden, and just get a very, very quick test hover to make sure that everything's okay before moving on to the final steps. Final steps are going to be to connect the FPV kit. So first job is to put the camera into the frame and put the cables into the back. I'm going to move some of the cables around. I am going to connect up the on-screen display controls as well. Now one of the things that I do with cameras like this that by default have voltage and names and all kinds of things being displayed is with the little keyboard that comes in the kit I'd connect it into the back, power the camera from a little spare VTX and just remove all that and set it up so you're not having to work your way through that when you're doing the configuration the screen is nice and clean. So just spend two minutes doing all that and turning all the stuff off on the camera, changing the settings, the aspect ratio, the white balance, the, all that jazz to the way you need it to be before you plug it in. Camera is going to be installed in the front and connected up as per the diagram that we looked at. So now we have the camera installed. So that was pretty straightforward. Next job then is to install the TBS Unify Pro. Now I would deep pin and remove all of the cables that you don't need. There's no point in having those hanging around, making the installation look messy and potentially catching or hitting another conductive part of one of the other pieces. Now the TBS Unified Pro supports 6 to 28 volts, so the 9 volts we're running it on will be absolutely fine. So again, it's just a case of working my way along the back and doing all of the soldering. Once that's done, then it's just a case of plugging in the antenna, triple checking finally that 
all of the connections are the right way round. I haven't done anything silly and put a positive to a negative or vice versa with a camera and VTX. And then it's a case of putting the top deck on, doing up all the screws and this thing is built. This has been a very fun, easy build. All the parts that I've used here are available as options when you order a Marmot frame from Armatac. The one-piece frame and the way the frame is laid out makes accessibility and access to all the different parts very simple and straightforward. And the thought in terms of the space inside means that there's absolutely loads of room in here. So if you wanted to put a run cam split or something else, there is tons of room for you to add one of those if you weren't going to use a separate action camera. Some builds, in my experience, really want to kick your butt, and every time you try and do something, you seem to get into trouble. Doing this build in this process, for me, always ends up in a pretty satisfactory result. But with a beautiful frame like this and top quality components, then you end up with not only something that looks really great, but flies fab too. My top tips are always test your flight controller before you start to make sure that that's all working fine. Install your receiver and power system, do a quick test hover to make sure it's okay at that point, and then once you have installed all the VTX stuff, then you've got a final build and you're ready to fly. So hopefully that's interesting for those of you that wanted to see this thing built. It's as simple as easy to put together as the build that we did with the Chameleon TI, but that new cage is brilliant and I love how much movement there is for both the FPV camera and also GoPro or other action camera that you could mount on top of the cage. Thanks for watching the video and watching right to the very end. You can find me in all the usual places on social media and if you like the video and like what I'm doing here then hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon too. If you really like what I'm doing you can go the extra mile and become one of my Patreons for access to me directly for support and also giveaways and regular updates too. If you're looking for particular content, then check out the playlist. I organize all of my videos into playlists, so if you're looking for a particular topic, you can find everything here. If it's called Introduction To, it's designed to start very simply and build on that simple introduction to teach you all about it. If it's called For Beginners, then that is really aimed at people who are brand new to that part of the hobby. You can also search on YouTube for anything that you're interested in using the search function at the top. So iNav Painless 360 will find all of my videos and even the playlists around iNav. So thanks again for watching and happy flying.